The most unique World Cup in history in Qatar in 2022 in this bitter World Cup being minus five currently in England is about to conclude being France versus Argentina in the final and I'm about to do a predictions video for that tomorrow night. However, today, as we've said, there are two teams left in it, meaning there are 30 teams that have currently been knocked out in this World Cup. So in this video, I'm going to be doing a quick tier list on each team individually, saying where they are on their tier. But if you haven't already, please can you go and subscribe, guys. I do appreciate all the subscriptions I could get. That was a quick one, though, it? Um, but yeah, if you haven't already, please go and like the video and uh, comment below what your thoughts on this video, where you think they should arrive on this list. But let's have a look at this tier list. So in this tier list, we have got each and every team, and I'll be going through them relatively quickly, relatively, you know, briefly, because there are 32 teams, like I said. So first and foremost, we will start with Argentina. Obviously, Argentina were in the, well, they are still in the World Cup final, aren't they? So you can't really say anything other than perfect so far. They, you know, actually, you know what? Maybe not perfect. Not right now. Just above, just just right there, because of the Saudi loss, I, and I will speak about these losses. We'll speak about certain games. If it wasn't for Lionel Messi, then I think that Argentina will be knocked out. But ifs and buts, they're just words, aren't they? You know, they've, they've got Messi for a reason. Argentina are in the final, deservedly so. After that first game, they've been perfect so far. So, I'm indecisive right now. What do you think, guys? Perfect or above? I'm going to go, you know what, I'm going to stick with my guns and go with perfect. So next up, we've got Argentina. Argentina obviously made it to round of 16, beating the likes of Denmark in the way into that round of 16. And I'm going, I'm going to go with above because nobody expected them to do anything in this World Cup. I think they were just here on the principle that they won that um, playoff game against Peru. Uh, luckily so, because I know that Peru battered them in that game. And nobody really expected Argentina, to, uh, sorry, Australia to do much in that World Cup. So they, they've, they've held themselves proud. Probably the worst team they've had in the last 20 years. Hopefully they've got a regiment in the next four years so we can see a better team like we did with the Socceroos from the last 20 years. Next up is Bel Belgium. <laughs> I was going to say Belarus. I can't put anything other than awful because most people would have expected them to be at least in the quarterfinals. The golden generation seems to be done, doesn't it, now? I think that when you talk about Belgium right now, I haven't spoken about them recently in this World Cup. And then... And to be honest, guys, I'm, I'm looking forward to the World Cup being back. As an England fan, it's not great now that we're not in it anymore. But I do love speaking about football. But this Belgian team, I mean, the likes of De Bruyne, Lukaku, they seem to be the only ones left. Vertonghen's on his way out. Alderweireld is on his way out. Tillemans isn't really performing like people thought he would be. It, it can't be anything other than awful. And I think there's only going to be a two or three teams in the perfect, two or three teams in the awful, and the rest are going to be in, in the mid-range. Next up is Brazil, and you've got to say it's it's either going to be awful or meh because they got to the quarterfinals. Yes, they battered South Korea in that round of 16. They made it through the groups very easily, but as soon as they got to a team that was difficult or um, resolute in that Croatia team, then it's it's hard not to say that they weren't irrelevant. I might, I might, sorry, meh. I might change it in future. I might change it to awful. Uh, it depends how this list goes, but right now they are very, very close to going that awful. Next up is Cameroon, and I think that Cameroon obviously never expected to get out of that group. It was a difficult group with Serbia and Switzerland, so I'm going to go with about right. I think that, I mean, they won that game against Brazil. It wasn't, it was a pretty much a dead rubber game, a foregone, not a foregone conclusion. Good, good to see Abubakar Kamara get his goal. Yeah, it was it was nice. To, sorry, Vincent Abubakar, not Abubakar Kamara. I do apologise. Um, it was good to see us get his goal. Good to see Cameroon get that win. About right seems seems fair, doesn't it? For him. With with next up is Canada, their first World Cup since 1986. Now I'm going to go with. I'm just. It's going to be uh, above Bel uh, Brazil, but I'm going to go with about. You know, it's it's about irrelevant. Man, they didn't really do much in terms of. I think people wanted to see them do more with the likes of Alfonso Davis, Junior Hoyler, Jonathan David in the team. I, and I don't think they have that much depth. The way they got through that CONCACAF showed to me that they had much more than what they showed, whether it was nerves, whether it was just the first time they've been there, naivety. I'm not too sure. Hopefully we'll see them in a four years' time 
I'm sure we will because it's quite a young squad. There's, there's a couple of older players that probably won't be there next time. Like I said, Junior Hoylet. But there are a lot of young players coming through Canada and the USA right now. Costa Rica, um, they were pretty relevant. Beat, beat Japan to make it interesting in the last game of the, the uh, group stage. And what I will say is that that last uh, group stage was probably one of the best group stages of the campaign. I think at one point Japan and Costa Rica were going through. But actually, you know what? That's a bit harsh, isn't it? But no, wait, it's not because they lost 7-0. We're going to put them over Brazil, though, just for now. Next up is Croatia. Um, I'm definitely going to put it above because nobody really expected them to do much. I don't think they expected to beat Brazil. They just squeezed through Japan. Um, but other than that, I think that they can't be about right. I think it is just above what they uh, were worth. And obviously, they still have a game left, don't they? Tomorrow night um, against Morocco to be either third or fourth again is an incredible feat. Um, obviously, they finished second last time. And what I will say is this is probably C Croatia's last ever World Cup where they will get to this stage. I don't think they will. I think it's a very much a purple patch for them, the likes of Modric, Brozovic, Kovacic, and then that midfield, Juranovic um, as well, uh, right back, as well as the goalkeeper who had an absolute storm, didn't he? The first ever goalkeeper to save three out of four penalties against Japan. Whether they were good penalties or not is to be said, but they still have to be saved, don't they? So above for Cro Croatia right there. So it's fully deserved as well. Denmark, um, everyone expected these to be um, dark horses, didn't they, in this one? The way that they performed at the Euros, especially against England, got unlucky to not go to, through to the final of the Euros. To then go out in the group stage against a pretty easy group, wasn't it? Australia, not the best, like I said, in the last 20 years, probably the weakest squad. And Tunisia, pr a pretty a pretty easy squad to get through, no offence. But they should be winning them games, and they did. But I, I don't... They just didn't do nothing for me in this in this World Cup um, when it really counts and when it really matters. So, awful. It has to be awful, doesn't it? Ecuador, next. I think um, they did well. Well, well, they beat Qatar. <laughs> But they obviously didn't make it out of the um, group stage, so it's a it's about right. I think I don't think they were relevant or meh. Um, I don't think that they were expecting to get through that group, although they were. Hmm, I'm trying to. <laughs> this is what the, this is what I like about this. I can re re jog my memory of what happens during this, and I remember thinking just before it. I think that Ecuador only lost one of the last fourteen games, so they have to go into irrelevant. And I'm going to push Brazil down to awful because I, the, for a team not to to be favourites in this World Cup and go out of the quarterfinals so pathetically as well after a draw against uh, Croatia, Neymar not getting the goal in in the in not get, not having a penalty essentially really shows a lack of um, leadership. Really shows a lack of nous. Really shows a lack of uh, guttural. Um, expectancy, if that makes sense, you know it. It shows that Brazil don't have what it takes to be a World Cup winning squad, and it, something needs to change soon, or they will stick to that five wins, don't they? Um, England next up is about right. I think I don't think they did anything poorly. I don't think they did anything right. Well, they did. They, they, they won obviously six two three nil twice. It's just when they got to the stage where they needed to produce something finally you know when we get to that big stage when we get to that 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 stage where we play a big squad they need to show their their experience and this is about right you know losing to france who were probably a better team probably weren't on the day but france were incredibly clinical weren't they in that game like i've said in my previous video it's a shame, obviously, as an England fan, as an England supporter, as an English man, that I'm saying it's about right for England. And I think I'm still on the fence whether it's Southgate in or out. However, this isn't just about England. This is about the whole of the World Cup. France um, will still go above, you know. It's not perfect. So, well, you know, you can't. They're in the final and you can't say anything but perfect. Um, obviously, Fr no, uh, we'll go with above so far just because they are the world champions right now and it's difficult to 
defend your title. Look at the amount of champions who have faltered recently. Italy, Germany, Spain, all struggling after they won the World Cup. It's really shown that France have such a good generation of footballers, not just one, but multiple now. It's been eight years and they're still producing the way they are with the likes of Pogba, Kante out. Players who haven't even made it onto onto the field yet. I know they've used most of the players, but it was during that Tunisia game that was a pretty much a dead rubber. It can't be anything less than above. I will change it potentially in the future if there's not enough in that perfect. Germany uh, were probably the worst team in this World Cup. Um, through expectations, they didn't go into this World Cup with a, a great record. I think they only won one of the last four games. Um, the likes of uh, Havertz, the likes of Timo Werner, the likes of um, Gundogan, you know, it, they have a lot of great players in that team and it really feels like they're going through a transition right now. Hansa Flick hasn't shown himself to be good enough at its level, potentially. Hockham Lowe at the end of his reign as well. It really is a, a worrying time for Germany and it really feels like England around 2010 time where they just did nothing, essentially. They were just there, pretty irrelevant, if, even if they got there. Next up is Ghana. Um, Ghana, what did they do? They got to the... Oh, they, they got to, at the group stage, but I'm going to go with about right. I think that nobody really expecting Ghana to, to do anything. I think they are the highest in terms of world rankings, being 61st in the world, which is insane to think they're above Qatar. We'll get onto them in a bit. But ultimately, I think that Ghana are going to be happy in this World Cup just, just to see Suarez cry. I think that's the only, the only positive in this World Cup. I think they won a game, I know they did, um, against South Korea. However, that was such a tight group and any one of those teams could have got through. But Ghana did have the lowest expectations in that group alone. And yeah, about right, so fine for them. Next up is Iran. Um, pretty relevant. Lost 6-2 against England. Beat Wales. Um, didn't really. They drew against USA. Wasn't really a. Uh, did they draw against USA? I can't even remember that. One second, guys. Sorry about this. Uh, World Cup. I'm pretty sure USA won that game, didn't they? Anyway, it doesn't matter if they won or if they didn't. They didn't get through. They didn't really do much. So I'm going to put them in irrelevant. Japan next. I'm going to put them. Uh, oh. If they beat Croatia, they would have been above. But I think about right. No, wait. They will put them above. And for the for the only reason is because they beat Germany and they beat Spain. The, it's insane that they lost against Costa Rica or they would have finished top of that group perfect points. I think they took that Costa Rica game too lightly, knowing that Costa Rica lost 7-0 in the previous game. Because obviously... They should have won that game against Croatia. Croatia were there for, to be taken for, and it wasn't. It only took three horrible penalties for them to be out of that World Cup. And you know who knows where Japan would be right now. So, I, I'm going to have to say above, and it is well deserved for them. So well played. Uh, next up is Mexico. Pretty irrelevant, weren't they? Didn't really do much um, in a group with uh, Poland, who went through just and. Saudi Arabia. Oh, that was it. Saudi Arabia scored in last minute, weren't it? Yeah, for that for that last goal alone, not to be defending well enough in the second last the dying embers of the game shows that you know it was a pretty re irrelevant World Cup for them. Next up, and probably the best team so far in terms of expectations. Sorry about that one. In terms of expectations, in terms of how people perceived them beforehand is Morocco, and it can't be anything other than perfect. A Moroccan side who nobody expected to even get out of the group, never mind beat Portugal, beat Spain. France were pretty dominant against them, but who, <laughs> nobody expected them to get to that stage ever. The first ever African team to get to the semi-final held themselves in high regard. Marrakesh will be buzzing right now, even though they went out. They've still got another game, so... I really, really hope that Morocco win that in on Saturday. Probably, I will be watching it, and and you know, I will be a Moroccan for that hour or two. Um, and and all the plaudits cannot be understated with this Moroccan side. Well played, well done. Hats off to you. You deserve a good good break, but there's a, there's games on in a week. Um, 
Next up on our list is Netherlands. Um, Netherlands, they lost against Argentina on penalties. They probably shouldn't have even got to that stage. They got through the group stage easy. They were about right for that. I'm going to going to go with about right. It seems about the same as the England fixture. I think whoever wins that one on that side gets to the final. Um, like England and France on the on the right hand side. The likes of you know, it's good to see Netherlands back. Obviously, they weren't in the last one, but I just don't think they did much. I don't. You could almost make a case of them being irrelevant, but it, that seems a bit harsh. So I'm going to put them in about right. Poland uh, about right as well. They were only expected to get out of the group, but I mean, against the a Mexico team, it was a coin flip, weren't it, between the two sides? Didn't play well against Argentina. Didn't really play that well against Brazil to go out. Got battered essentially in that game. It was a it was a nice and friendly result for them essentially, weren't it? That Brazil game only being two one, uh, but I believe that Poland only expected to get to the round of sixteen. Next up is Portugal. Um, they should have won that. They should have won that Moroccan game, shouldn't they? That was the that was that was very much an England fixture, weren't it? Back in the day, where we're very expected to get through in that in that game, and we don't. Almost like the Iceland game, you know. Um, yeah, the, I think the Switzerland game probably was the peak, and they performed well. So I'm going to push them to about the England Netherlands stage. I think. It is about right for them to go out at that stage. I don't think many teams expected them to get much further than that. Whoever they were facing, you know, if, if it was Spain or if it was England or France, I think the quarterfinals is about right for Portugal and probably is for the next 10 years, to be honest with you. Next up is Qatar. They were terrible. They weren't as bad as the other teams in that group. Nobody expected them to do much, but oh my God. I don't think... The expectation was so low, but nobody expects it to be that low. My God, that first game, absolute shambles. Even the referee decided to give him a, a goal that was offside, onside, weren't it? And it, yeah, it's off the field, pathetic, uh, to say the very least. <laughs> you know, disgraceful, evil, inhumane on the field. This, this is obviously what we're speaking about right now. I mean, I was going to say the same thing, but that's a bit harsh, isn't it? But yeah, they were they were abject, they were terrible, awful. Is the perfect word for them. Next up is Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, who nobody expected to do anything in that group. It can't be anything other than above, just for that one game, one game alone. I did mention it on my channel recently that game, and nobody expected. I mean. That has to be the biggest upset in World Cup history. I think there's only North Korea beating Portugal back in 1966 or 1962, one of them World Cups that has a sort of similar vibe to it. Maybe Senegal beating France in 2002 in the opening game of the, the... No, the second game of the World Cup. I don't think that... It's it, it's incredible, isn't it? I, this is what this World Cup has been about. The underdog story, the, the teams who didn't expect to get there or didn't expect to do much... Winning against sides, it, it, mainly the African and Asian teams beating the European squads or the, the 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 South American squads, it has been an amazing one. The Moroccan story alone should be a story to share for this World Cup. Obviously, off the field has been awful, terrible. Like I said, anything bad you can explain that. Everyone knows that, but on the field, I think this is this has probably been one of the most entertaining World Cups. We'll, we'll ignore the referees right now because they haven't been great, but on the field. The, the play, the performances from the underdogs, un the, the teams that didn't expect to do much, it has been amazing, and it's really made me not re not miss uh, Premier League or Championship football. I really haven't missed it. I remember I watched the uh, the, the team that I support back then this weekend, and I was like, just get me back to the <laughs> just get me back to the internationals again. I know that will change, and I know it's the World Cup, it's, I know it's unique, but this has been an incredible World Cup. Next up is Senegal. I'm going to go with about right. I, I think they did well to get through the group stage, beat uh, the Ecuador team, like I said, who were coming into it with decent form. I don't think they expected to get much further playing against a good England, England squad in that day, a clinical England squad as well. They nearly nicked a goal early doors, but obviously as Senegal opened up, England got them on the counter and that's their best att attribute. So 
yeah, about right is fine. Obviously, losing Mane just before the World Cup as well is a huge loss. Um, one you can't really recover from. It's like England losing Kane. Uh, Sen- uh, Serbia were awful. One point in the group stage. A lot of people thought them and Denmark were going to be the dark horses. Obviously, neither of them made it out of the group. Um, Mitrovic and Vlahovic only played 71 minutes together, which says a lot. If they played together throughout the thing, the, the whole group stages, maybe it made a change, but I don't think it would have ultimately. I think the defence is too bad to even get through the group stage. Next up is uh, South Korea. Um, hmm, indecisive on this one. They got through the group stage and then they got battered by Brazil. So I'm going to go with about right. I don't think many people thought they'd get much further than that. I don't think many people would think that many Asian teams would get through the group or the round of 16. So if you get to that stage, then it has to be an automatic about right. Like I said, they got battered in that game. Could have been 7 0 at half time. Uh, very naive, very, very poor from South Korea in that game. They, they basically played to Brazil's best features, best attributes. So can't be anything more, can't be anything less. Next up is Spain. They lost to Morocco, so they're going to go in irrelevant. Uh, not, not, it's not a slight on Morocco at all, I'm sorry. But Spain should be winning that game. I think Spain took it too lightly. Whether or not it's because Morocco were playing well or Spain were poor, doesn't matter, does it? They should be winning that game in the round of 16. And they should have got further in this World Cup. I think many people thought that, you know what, this team with um, the likes of Busquets, with um, Pedri and, and Gavi in that centre midfield roles, Danny Olmo didn't perform. Morata had to come in and get a couple of goals, and he's not in the best form. Spain don't really have a striker. The defence is quite poor right now, especially in this World Cup, but still they should be performing with this team. We have a lot of players in the Barcelona team, a lot of players in the La Liga, in the Premier League, in the Bundesliga. They should be performing at the top level, and they're not doing that right now. Next up on the list is uh, Switzerland, who got battered in that round of 16, but the fact that they even got to the round of 16, beating the likes of Serbia, Cameroon in their group stage, means that they can't be anything, they can't, they can't be awful, but they can't be anything more than irrelevant or mere because they got beat 6-7-1. or seven, one. I keep forgetting which one it is, because I think about 6-1, it was 7-1 in this uh, World Cup. Uh, it, oh, sorry, I'm a channel, and yeah, I think that they bottled that game. They should have. It should have been a lot closer than what it was, and you really can't deny that this Switzerland team should have done a lot better. People were picking them to be semi-final, quarter-final, and they just did not turn up on that day. Um, four left now. Um, Tunisia, they beat France, but I can only put them in the bottom of May because it wasn't a relevant game, wasn't it? Hats off to Tunisia for beating France in that game. However, it was a dead rubber game and nothing really meant much in it. I'm glad that they got their win. I'm glad that they got the celebrations on the day because, you know, they got to the World Cup and they deserve it. But in that group with Australia, they obviously lost to them. That was the key fixture for them in that in that, in that that group stage. And as soon as they lost that, they can't be anything more than meh or irrelevant. Um, three, game, three, three sides to go. My tonk is feeling like cotton right now. I feel like I've been speaking for a long time. I'm not used to it, to be honest with you. Um, is Uruguay. Um, and they were pretty relevant too. I don't think they did much. Luis Suarez crying was a, a great little uh, picture, a great little, uh, you know, time for me. I, I'm not a big... I love him on the pitch, but hate the, the way he plays in terms of anything anything for a win. And um, yeah, it felt, it felt good. Obviously, I put Darwin Nunes as the top scorer as well, and he did nothing. Um <laughs> They have a lot of good players in that team. Ben Tencor, Valverde as well, not performing. That that duo as a centre mid should get through that group alone with with Ghana, with with South Korea in that group. They should have performed a lot better. And it's this feels like um, the Belgium, doesn't it? It feels like an end of an era. It doesn't feel like there's much going on with Uruguay right now. And I think that we will see a slight decline. We'll probably see them in the World Cup again, but... I don't think we're going to see the heights of them in 2010, 2014, are we? Two left, and both in England's group. First of all is USA, and I'm going to put them... A, hmm, I'm going to put them a little lower above, because I do think that they were... I put them as dark horses, but I don't think many people expected them to even get out of the group. I think that 
they did show a, a, a level of football and a style of play that really is it is something to build on. And if they can get a striker that's clinical, and if they can get a striker that that is a world, not even a world class striker, striker, you just need a maybe just a Premier League style striker, you know, like level. You, you just need an okay striker up there. And it's a really, really good USA team. I think that the, the chances that they had against Argentina in that game, sorry, against Netherlands in that game, it, it really was on, on, it was a fine balance between being a really good game and just an okay one. And the build-up play that the USA and the had in that game and in the games against England where they should have won, they beat, they beat um, Iran, they drew against Wales, and that was only because Wales, you know, is the first World Cup in 50-something years, wasn't it? So they, they were bound to come back into it. They are a young squad, so that's probably why they got back into it. They showed their naivety in the game. They showed the the willingness to, you know, with four more years in their belt and four year, more years of experience, I'm sure this USA, this USA team sorry, will be the likes of the Denmarks and the Serbias who people really think that they're going to go far. And not to mention the fact that the next World Cup is in USA as well. It's an exciting time for a, a country that, you know, is a massive country and it probably does need to perform better than what they're doing. I know that numbers don't make sense in terms of how well a football team does, but it should do when it gets to that stage. It, especially with the amount of players uh, coming over to Bundesliga, coming over to the Premier League now, even got Premier League managers that are American. It is an exciting time and look out for USA in this next World Cup. I know I probably won't even be on YouTube by that time anyway, but look out for them, honestly, because I think they will go far. And last but not least, uh, Wales, who were pretty they were pretty awful, weren't they? They didn't really do much. Um, they were pretty crap against England. It feels nice. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I don't, I'm not saying this because I'm English. They lost against Iran. They were terrible in that game, went down to 10 men, stupid goalkeeping from Hennessy. They drew against USA. I think the reluctance on not playing, reluctance on playing Bale, and the you know Gareth Bale's only played one game in the last year, so I don't know why they're trying to force him into the game. The, the likes of Brennan Johnson on the bench, the first World Cup in 34, 40, 54 years. Sorry, one point in the group stage just isn't good enough. I think that people expected them to go at least to the round of 16. They just didn't turn up. But if you're Welsh, I'm sure that doesn't matter, does it? I think that the only thing that matters is you finally got there. You finally brought that hoodoo. Hopefully you can build on this, but it really does feel like the end of an era, a bit like the Belgium. Bale's going to be retired by the next time the World Cup comes around. So are Aaron Ramsey. Not much coming through through the youth teams as well. Um, but yeah, that's it. There is my There is my tier list. And obviously... I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think there's many changes that I would potentially make. And let me know in the in the comments below if you disagree, if you agree on them. Um, where would you put, for instance, France maybe into perfect or USA down to about right or Wales up to irrelevant? I'm not, which is <laughs> up to irrelevant isn't bad. Um, but like I said, if you haven't already, guys, please can you go and subscribe to the channel? I do appreciate all the subscriptions I'm getting right now. The Calendom Talks Nonsense podcast is out now, the last in the season. We've got Pete BLC on there as well. So it's a really good listen. And I do appreciate all the likes that I do again on that one because I do put my most into them podcasts and these videos as well. Um, so if you haven't already, please can you go subscribe. Like I said, comment below, give it a like, give it a share as well. I'm, I'm not sure you do that. To be honest with you, just share it to people, show it to people. Um, and I need to go and have a drink of water because my mouth is very coarse right now. <laughs> Do appreciate you if you are at this moment. Um, and I will see you soon. See you guys. Peace.